Chris Rogers of Inspector Bots, and this is the Spider Mite Inspection Robot. Some of my customers have been asking for uh, improvements such as uh, water resistance capability for the inspection robot, and now I'm happy to say that I offer a water resistance upgrade for the Spider Mite. This does not enable you to drive your Spider Mite underwater, as it may seem from a video, but it shows some of the steps involved in making the Spider Mite more water resistant. Spider Mite uses the actual XR10 crawler base as its platform. So, this is the vision module, which I'll remove. And this is the axial crawler. Basically, the video shows you how to make this waterproof so you can actually drive this underwater. So, the first thing you need is an AM radio, and this is the receiver. It's an AR1, which is a, a stock axial receiver and basically it enables you to transmit the signal to the antenna which is sticking out of the water. This is a little waterproof box that's provided with the XR10 crawler and it's used to store the, the receiver and it comes with a little rubber gasket you want to make sure that's in place on the rim to keep the water out. You also want to use an AM transmitter this is a stock Axial AX1 two-channel radio. This is the antenna that comes from the AM receiver. And you want to thread this through this plastic rod, which is provided by Axial, and mount it to the crawler so that it transmits the signal um, through the air, not through the water. This will stick out up above the water surface. I'm also using a 30 amp marine grade Amtronics speed controller, which you can see buried here uh, in the crawler. This is a demonstration of the waterproof speed controller used in the spider mite. This is it here, and you can see it's attached to a 12 volt battery, a DC motor, an on off switch, and a radio receiver. I'm going to drop it in this cup of water and turn it on. This demonstration is to show you how to waterproof a servo. Basically you want to remove uh, this screw and these four screws. And then get yourself some dielectric uh, grease or silicone compound. And a couple of popsicle sticks and a screwdriver. I'm wearing a rubber or latex gloves just to keep this gunk off my hands. So you take this top plate off and you basically want to squirt a bunch of this stuff inside. There's a bearing in here, you want to coat that bearing. So another bearing right here. You want to coat that. And then I run a, a bead all the way around the perimeter where the cap joins the body. And then just make sure that that's touching all the surfaces so when that cap comes on the body, it's in contact with the grease. Next I like to uh, pull this bottom cap off and uh, slide this boot back. It's a little rubber boot on the wire. And then I'm going to proceed to cover this entire thing, the circuit board, and a little bit of this wire on both sides. This is a motor in here, and I'm going to cover it with grease as well. And then seal off the perimeter so when the bottom comes back in place with the body, it's all waterproofed off. 
and then you just want to reassemble. Make sure you slide this boot back in position. So now you simply tighten these four screws and you can put the servo arm back on. And you're pretty much done. You just have to wipe off the extra grease. This is a test of the waterproofing on the spider mite. I've got a 7.4 volt light bulb. And I'm just going to drop it into the water. See if it still works. And here is a servo. This is the pan servo. This is the wheel assembly from the spider mite. Uh, this orange rim is the beadlock rim. And the silver ring is uh, a weight system which allows you to add and subtract different amounts of weight to aid in the climbing of obstacles. When it's fully assembled, this whole wheel weighs almost a pound. If I remove the front wheel from this chassis, you can see some of the, the grease that's been applied to the, the axle and the hub carrier. Uh, this also has a couple ball bearings, or sealed ball bearings, inside this hub. It helps uh, provide water resistance. 